Okay, have you guys seen this chain of infection before? If you can say yes or no. Yes. Okay, good. This is basically my Bible. So that's kind of funny. If you are an infection preventionist, this is what your everyday work looks like. Epidemiologists look at this to find out how they can break that. So let's talk about COVID. If you guys were looking at the portal of entry or exit, I'm sorry, let's do exit. Do you see the portal of exit? So how was COVID spread mainly? Do you guys know? Droplets. Okay. So portal of exit was going to be the coughing or the sneezing, correct? Any, the bodily secretions coming out. The mode of transmission were, was droplets through direct contact, indirect contact. So basically, if the droplet that you saw in the sneeze video went into your eyes, nose, or mouth, when that person had COVID, there was a risk that you could get that. And that is the portal of entry for you. The portal of entry was the mucous membranes, okay? So right there, those three, portal of exit, mode of transmission, and portal of entry, you already know about COVID. So what our job is to do as epidemiologists to find out how we can break this chain. So portal of exit, when someone was sneezing, what did we put on our face to catch the droplets? Face mask. The mask. Okay. So that was trying to break the chain. Okay. Then mode of transmission, the mask also, because if we can keep the droplets in, then hopefully they won't go on a surface or go into someone's face. The portal of entry. Also a mask and also a face shield. Do you remember when you would go to stores and people were wearing goggles or a face shield? That's why, because our mucous membranes are all three of these things, not just one. So when you saw a lot of that plexiglass go up, that's what that was all about. It was about protecting the eye. Also, another way is, of course, the six feet, because if the sneeze can't travel further, then it can't enter into our eyes, nose, or mouth. We also heard through evidence that it could also be airborne and airborne means that the droplets are so small that they can stay suspended in the air and we can actually inhale it. That's where it came with the N95s, the filtering face mask. That's where N95s came into play because those filter out all those small little nuclei um, droplets. Okay. So we talked about breaking the chain with COVID. Let's talk about susceptible host with COVID. So a susceptible host with COVID would be someone that is not vaccinated, okay? So if we, when you hear about herd immunity, basically what that means is there's such a high level of vaccinated people in the community that those that are not vaccinated will probably more than likely be protected, okay? Because if we're all vaccinated and one of us isn't, well, we're not going to catch the virus to give to the one person because we're vaccinated. Okay. COVID was a little bit more tougher because people were still getting COVID after the vaccine, but that's also because it was mutating. Okay. And to be honest, I read a blog today, it's still mutating. So we still have some things going on with COVID that probably won't end for a very long time. What I want to talk about next is Let's talk about measles. I'm going to talk about measles in just a little bit with you all. But I will tell you, do you guys know what there's a vaccine called MMR and it's measles, mumps, rubella. I'm assuming you all have all had it because you're in public school and you've had the vaccine. So do you know the first time an individual gets the MMR vaccine? Do you know what age? You probably don't know, but it's actually 12 months old. Okay. The first MMR received by a person is usually at 12 months. Okay. So from zero months to 12 months, do you think that infant is at risk of getting measles? Yes. Yes. Okay. If the infant breastfeeds or gets maternal antibodies from their mom, they can be protected for a few months sometimes up to six months. Okay. But also that depends on the length of breastfeeding and how much antibodies the baby got and things like that. So let's say that none of you all were vaccinated from measles and your teacher brought a baby into the class that was eight months old. And one of you had measles. There's a chance that that baby could get measles. Okay. And all of you, cause you weren't vaccinated. 
So that's what we call a susceptible host. So when you look at this chain of infection, infants are a susceptible host because they cannot always get the vaccines or medications or things that we can get to protect ourselves. Elderly are the same way and then immunocompromised. Immunocompromised, if you don't know what that means, someone that has an immune system that's compromised in some way. Okay, so it could be someone that's on chemo treatment, someone that's on high steroid treatment, someone that's had a recent organ transplant, people on dialysis, different things like that. So once again, my preach here is that if you can get the vaccine for certain things, you should get the vaccine because it's not just about us, it's about who we're protecting in our environment. You guys probably don't remember that a long, a while back, there was a measles outbreak at Disneyland. Do you guys remember that? Might have been, you guys are still pretty young. So a bunch of different babies got measles because someone was in line for a ride that had measles, didn't really know yet. They didn't feel good. But what happens is it was spread throughout that line and throughout that area, infants got measles because they were not protected. So a lot of times when people have babies, they might keep the baby in for a while because they want to make sure that like the baby's not being exposed to certain things that maybe it can't fight off. Let's talk about really quick. Do you guys know what West Nile virus is? Have you heard of it? Maybe. It's not as popular here in the United States, but we still see it. Okay. And it's transmitted through a vector, which is a mosquito. Okay. Do you know where mosquitoes breed and lay their eggs? Standing water. I heard someone say water, I believe. Okay. Standing water. Okay. So as public health, if there was a mosquito virus going around like West Nile, we would actually start educating on probably the reservoir. If you look at the chain of infection, there's reservoir and there's water. So we would tell people to empty standing water around their houses in dog bowls in spare tires in kiddie pools, anything that would have standing water. Now, mosquitoes don't like to lay eggs in areas that have a current. So a lot of times, lakes, ponds, things that have some sort of current, it usually doesn't like them. So they, if it's rushing water, it's better. If it's standing stagnant, we'll ask to get rid of it. And this also includes like pots of flowers that have water around it all the time. We would be talking about that. We would break the chain of infection if we could get rid of the reservoir, which is the standing water, which is the breeding ground for the mosquitoes. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I think it's still going on. 